Well, welcome back. We are now going to be talking about mutations and genetic variation. So before we get into this, now that we understand how we go from DNA to our actual phenotype, our physical traits by making proteins, we can better talk about these ideas of mutation and genetic variation. So when we say genetic variation, we're talking about different alleles. So this could be like different eye colors, like blue, brown, green, hazel, whatever. This could be different hair colors, different hair textures. And so these different alleles, I'm gonna use eye color for this just because it's easy to talk about. Um, so where we get this genetic variation from, so brown eyes versus blue eyes, is from different alleles. And these different alleles will have slightly different DNA codes. So slightly different uh, nucleic acid sequences or slightly different nucleotide sequences in the DNA will cause these differences that we see when we look at each other. And so that's what we're talking about when we talk about genetic variation. We're talking about different alleles for the same trait. So blue eyes versus brown eyes versus green eyes. Now, these differences, no matter the difference, they are called mutations. So if the DNA is not, um, it's, it's not a great terminology, but it's just the way that scientists talk about it. If these mutations are not the normal allele or normal um, nucleotide code, it is considered a mutation. So it's called like the wild type. Um, now for humans you know we have all these different physical features they are all normal um but just in terms of how the scientists talk about the wild type is considered normal so a great example of this is people who are lactose intolerant um so someone like myself i can't eat dairy it causes me a lot of stomach issues um Yes, you don't want to be around me if I consume any sort of dairy. So me being lactose intolerant is actually normal. I have the wild type allele. Um, if you can consume dairy without any issues in your digestion, you are a mutant. Um, you have a different allele than I do that allows you to consume dairy. Um, so just keep that in mind as we're talking about mutations. It's not necessarily bad. Um, it's not necessarily going to give you like superpowers or anything like we see in like Marvel or DC. Um, but these mutations essentially cause genetic variation, which when we do get to evolution is actually really good to have in any sort of species or population. All right. So basically, when we are talking about mutations in science, we are talking about any sort of change in the DNA sequence. So this is what I meant by any sort of change to the wild type or normal allele. So like I said, I was talking about lactose intolerance. It is the wild type or normal to be lactose intolerant. So I'm the normal one here. If you can consume dairy, you are the mutant. Um, again, you probably have it better than I do because you get things like ice cream and cheese, but that's just the terminology that scientists use. Um, now these changes in the DNA sequence can cause, can come from different places. Um, so things that cause mutations in your DNA are going to be UV radiation. So that's like sunlight when you get a sunburn, x-rays if you've ever had to go in to get like an x-ray taken of your bones or skeleton, and they can also come from DNA replication er errors. So remember, every single time you need a new cell made, you need to make a new copy of DNA. Nobody's perfect. And your DNA replication machinery, DNA polymerase, is not perfect either. And so sometimes, every so often, there is a mutation that occurs during the replication process. Now, if this mutation occurs, during the replication process, and you are actually making a gamete cell, so meiosis, um, if you are making an egg cell or a sperm cell, and that error occurs in the replication process, that's when you can pass on this mutated allele to your offspring. So these are some pictures here of some different types of mutations. Um, this is showing you some like finger mutations down here. 
I forget what this one is called. Um, this is showing you like different hair colors. So remember different alleles are different mutations. So um, I'm not sure which the wild type is, whether it's like brown hair, red hair or blonde hair. Um, but one of these is the wild type and then the other two are going to be mutations. These uh, furry faces down here are a mutation as well. And then if we look over here, the whole like unibrow situation is a mutation as well as albinism is a mutation. So albinism, you just don't produce any melanin in your skin, hair or eyes. And so you look very like white or washed out. All right, so I do want to show you this video on mutations from the Amoeba Sisters. They do a pretty good job of explaining where these mutations come from and what it means. Ever since I was a kid, I have been curious about mutations. I think certain movies may have had an impact. I used to imagine mutations with amazing abilities. But there was also a lot of people who understand about mutations. Many years ago, many people understand that mutations are changed in genetic material. More specifically, they can change the meaning of the world. Our family has a lot of mutations. They have a lot of mutations.
All right, so I know they just threw a lot of information at you. We're going to go through that information right now and talk about these different types of mutations that the amoeba sisters were talking about. So hopefully that gave you a good visual, number one, of how the mutation occurs in the DNA and then how that mutation actually shows through in the phenotype when we go through the transcription and translation process. So before we get into different types of mutations, I have this sentence right here. The bad cat saw the big dog and ran and bit him. So hopefully what you noticed about this sentence is that each word in this sentence is made out of three letters, just like our codons do when we are transcribing and translating. So we're going to use this sentence to show how mutations might affect this particular gene. So what I'm saying is I'm comparing the sentence to a gene that you have in your body. Um, so one type of DNA mutation is called a point mutation. This is what they are talking about with sickle cell anemia. So this is when a single base pair is changed or it's a substitution mutation, a single base pair is changed in the DNA. So what you're seeing here is for our sentence, the bad cat saw the big dog and ran and bit him. If this A in saw is changed to an E, instead of reading correctly, the sentence is now going to read, the bad cat so the big dog and ran and bit him. So the sentence no longer really makes sense um, just because of that one change in letter or one change in nucleotide. So this is what you are seeing with something like sickle cell anemia. So again, this is called a point mutation. One single point in the DNA is changed. One single point in the DNA nucleotide is changed from one letter to another letter. 
So we can actually look at this in the form of DNA. Um, you can translate both of these DNA sequences, but what you're going to find is that this uh, codon right here will no longer code for the same amino acid that you see this codon down here code for. So we're still going to have the same number of amino acids, but the actual sequence of amino acids is going to be different for this fourth amino acid or fourth codon. All right, so the next type of DNA mutation that we're going to talk about is an insertion mutation. And so basically we are inserting one or more nucleotides to our DNA sequence. So again, we're going to take our sentence, the bad cat saw the big dog and ran and bit him. And I'm going to insert the word sad. So in this case, the bad cat saw the sad big dog and ran and bit him. So the sentence still makes sense. We're actually adding another adjective to describe the dog. So this type of insertion, because we're adding a single amino acid to our protein, it might still make sense. So this could be the difference between brown eyes and blue eyes. Um, it could also be very detrimental or it could be neutral. So again, mutations aren't always bad. They're not always good. Sometimes they're neutral. It depends on what the actual mutation is. So the issue that we're seeing here when we look at an actual DNA sequence, what you should notice for this last codon right here, ACT, which is our stop codon, I have inserted or added two nucleotides into our DNA sequence. So now instead of reading as a stop codon at the end here, AGC will end up translating into some amino acid. We have CT, which we can't do anything with, and we're missing our stop codon. So most likely this will turn into a very detrimental mutation where we don't get the protein that we need from this gene. Um, the opposite of an insertion mutation is going to be a deletion mutation. So this is when one or more nucleotides are deleted from a sequence of DNA. So for our example, the bad cat saw the big dog and ran and bit him. Um, if we delete the word cat, it's now going to read, the bad saw the big dog and ran and bit him. So this sentence will no longer make sense. We don't know what the bad is. Um, so if we look at this in DNA, if I delete just one nucleotide, if I delete this T right here, excuse me, this is what is causing what we call that frame shift mutation. So basically without this T in our sequence, this A is going to move over to this codon. We're left with AG. This T will have to move over to this codon. We're left with CC. And then this G will move over to this codon, et cetera. So instead of reading our sentence correctly, we're now reading it very incorrectly, where at least one, two, three, four codons are coding for a different amino acid. And again, we are left without a stop codon. So again, this could be a very detrimental type of mutation found in the DNA. Oh, why are we watching this again? Oh, I know why. I was supposed to pause it. It's okay. We already watched it, so we're going to keep going. So those were DNA mutations. We're now going to talk about what is called a chromosome mutation. So the DNA itself is still being changed. It's still being mutated. However, it is just happening on a larger scale and that's why it's called a chromosome mutation. So this is a change to an entire gene, a region of a chromosome, or even an entire chromosome. And what you're seeing are the different types of chromosome mutations, except for non-disjunction. So we will be talking about non-disjunction. Non that's actually how Down syndrome forms. Um, but these are the different types. So duplication, inversion, deletion, insertion, and translocation. So before we get into those, like I said, let's talk about this non-disjunction chromosome mutation. Um, so this mutation occurs during the process of meiosis, during cell division when gametes are being formed. It can happen during the first round of meiosis, or it can, can happen. It can happen during the second round of meiosis. Basically, what's going on, and like the amoeba sisters said, at the end of the process, you are left with gametes that either have more chromosomes than it should have or less chromosomes than it should have. 
And so if you look at this diagram right here, this is showing you normal meiosis cell division. Over here are the two different types of non-disjunction or mutations in meiosis cell division. So like I said, you can have it, you can have the mutation happen during um, the second round of cell division. That's what you're seeing down here. So after the first round, we still have one of each chromosome, but when the chromatids are supposed to separate, they are not separating correctly down at the bottom here. Or you can have the mutation occur during the first round of cell division when we already have an unequal amount of chromosomes after the first round of cell division. So like I said, this is how Down syndrome is passed on to offspring. Either mom or dad, when the sperm cell or the egg cell is being made during meiosis, goes through non-disjunction. Um, so basically, if you have Down syndrome or a person with Down syndrome, they will have an extra chromosome. So instead of 46 chromosomes, people with Down syndrome have 47 chromosomes. They have three copies of chromosome 21. So it's also known as trisomy 21. Tri means three. So me is talking about chromosomes, three copies of chromosome 21. Um, and that leads to the symptoms that you see when you look at someone who has Down syndrome. Um, for our next mutation, an inversion mutation, um, I believe I actually have this type of mutation in one of my chromosomes. I got it from my mom because she has it too. But this is where some parts of a gene are, or some parts of a chromosome are like popped out of the chromosome. They are rotated around and then popped back in. So I think it's easier to understand and explain this type of mutation looking at the picture rather than reading the word. Um, so this right here, number one, this is representing a chromosome that you have in your body. And then on this chromosome, you have genes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Now, each of these genes can code for something. So maybe A codes for eye color, B codes for hair texture, C codes for how tall you are, etc. What's happening on this chromosome is that a couple genes are popping out of the chromosome they're rotating around and then they're reattaching to the chromosome. So instead of reading on this chromosome genes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I in the correct order, they are now reading in the incorrect order of A, B, C, F, E, D, G, H, I. So not only, because you might be thinking, oh, it only switched D and, uh, D and F in terms of where the genes are located, but remember now, E is also backwards compared to the way it should be. Um, so this, this type of mutation can actually be very, very deadly. Um, in my case, I think all it did is cause like a skin tag to start to grow on this side of my face. My mom had a skin tag as a baby. I had one as a baby. My parents had it removed. Um, could have been a third ear. That would have been cool to have. Um, but that's what an inversion mutation is. So translocation. This one is almost always deadly because remember, you need to have homologous chromosome pairs. So that's what you're seeing in number one over here. These are homologous chromosomes. So genes D and genes M might both code for eye color. So D might be like brown eyes and M might be for brown eyes. They code for the same gene, it might be different alleles. So what's happening here is that some genes from one homologous chromosome are breaking off. So that's what you see in number two down here. So genes J and K are now gone and they've reattached themselves to our other chromosome. So now if A and J coded for free versus attached earlobes, let's say A is for free earlobes, J is for attached earlobes. Now what's going on is on the same chromosome, you have two copies of the earlobe gene and you have no copies of the earlobe gene on its homologous pair. So that's why this one can be such a um, dangerous type of mutation to have and it is pretty deadly. Like the baby won't even be formed. 
All right, so next up we can have a deletion mutation on the chromosome level, very similar to a deletion mutation on the DNA level. It's just, it is a larger deletion than like a couple of nucleotides. So in this case here, we have our chromosome with genes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. We're gonna delete the genes D, E, F, G. And so that means we are left with a chromosome that only contains genes A, B, C, H, I. Depending on what genes are being deleted, these could be absolutely crucial for life uh, to form, or um, who knows, it might be like you used to have dimples and now you don't have dimples. It depends on what's being deleted. Duplication, this is actually a really cool one. Um, so duplication, we are duplicating a couple genes and inserting them into our chromosome. So our chromosome should look like this, where we have genes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. We're gonna duplicate the genes C and D. So now on our ending chromosome, we're gonna have two copies of genes C, excuse me, and two copies of genes D. So the chromosome is going to read A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Now, usually this type of mutation is not deadly. This is actually where we can start to develop new genes, new traits, new alleles. What usually happens in this type of scenario is that our duplicated genes will sit dormant in the genome. So you might have two copies of genes C on the same chromosome, but this second copy isn't actually being used for anything. So it just kind of chills out there for a while. Now let's say many generations go by and this particular mutation is passed, you know, to many, many new generations of people. Over time, we can acquire DNA mutations in genes C and genes D, and so they can develop into a new allele or even a new gene in general. So this is where we can develop new traits. Maybe it could be like a superhero trait. Who knows? You know, a little sci-fi. But that's the idea between a duplication mutation. I think that's all the mutations. Yeah. All right. So... As we've gone through these different types of mutations, please make sure you are checking in with your vocab notebook. I suggest for the DNA mutations, or I'm sorry, I suggest for the chromosome mutations, for the images in your vocab notebook, you're actually using these images that I have here. I think they are very, very clear in terms of what's happening for that type of mutation. What we will be doing next after you finish your vocab notebook is practicing reading DNA finding the mutation, and then showing what change that mutation causes. So specifically, pay attention to the first three mutations we talked about in DNA, which would be your point mutation, your insertion mutation, and your deletion mutation. Otherwise, um, I will see you in class. Finish your vocab notebook. Let me know if you have questions. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm sorry, I had to throw it in there. Had to throw it in there. Had to do the YouTube thing. Thought it was funny. It's not funny. We're done here.